Hello, and welcome back to Tabletop Archives. It's It's been a while since I've uploaded anything, but here we are again. You might be wondering, why am I in a different spot? There used to be a bookshelf right behind me. Um, let's just say that last year was a long decade. Yeah. So, this is going to be the new filming space, at least for now. We might see the bookshelf make a return later, but for now. Let's actually talk about how to customize Waterdeep Dragon Heist for your campaign. We're going to discuss how to run it as the module normally dictates, just within its own world and everything that it sets forth, but then how to also run it in your own custom world. Perhaps you're already running a campaign and you're like, I want to throw a heist at my players. Well, Dragon Heist is a great way to do that. But how do you do that? So let's start off with what the purpose of Dragon Heist is. There are four different factions vying for a treasure. Your party is trying to stop one of those factions from getting to that treasure. That, that's really it. That's, that's the whole thing. It's a very simple, simple module. It's only meant to be for levels 1 to 5, though of course you can customize it as you wish. Perhaps this is the start of a campaign. It does do a great job of leading them directly into Dungeon of the Mad Mage, so maybe that's what you're wanting to do. But perhaps you have level 7 to 12 adventurers, and they're in this moment of being in a big city, but they want, they want to do something. Perhaps this module is something you can use for those same characters while you're really focusing on how to end the campaign overall. So let's talk about what makes this module important. The four factions. In the module it's going to tell you to pick one of the four factions that are vying for control of both Waterdeep and also uh, endless amounts of money that your characters are after. Each of these different factions are actually very important, but you only ever have to fight one. Sure, the module talks about how if your players are taking too long, you could surprise twist ending, have them fight another bad guy at the end instead of the ones they've been pursuing. But still, it's only one villain. And the game wants you to set up all four different factions, all four different villains. <sighs> but that's a lot of work for so little payoff for three of them. Tip number one on homebrewing this module, have them fight all four. It makes it ten times more interesting if all four of these factions are trying to screw over both the party and each other. Perhaps the party could even try and pit the factions actively against each other. The, the module gives you some reasons for why these factions might fight each other. The Xanathar and Manchun have been at war and it is what started the entire module. Perhaps they're continuing that fight. Maybe Jarlaxle is going to fight the Castle Enters because they're trying to impose a new law that makes it harder for Drow to live in the city. By having all four factions be the villains, it can make it so much more interesting. But Frank, the module makes it to where only one villain faction is actually doing the things. How do we make it to where all four can? Instead of having it being this sequential puzzle they have to solve, maybe just place three items that open the vault, and the fourth item is the location of the vault. Each of the four factions has one of these four things, and they're trying to fight for each other to get it, and you can only open the vault if you know where it is and have the three keys to open it. So by simply just allowing all four factions to attack each other, attack the party, you give the party more freedom to do what they want and to be able to just come up with more interesting and creative ways to solve this problem. Number two way of homebrewing this. If you are starting this adventure off, give the party the gold. Because in the game, if you find it, you give it back to the lords, but like, that sucks. You, it would be the equivalent of making a million dollars and then a majority of that money goes back to the government. Wait a minute. I'm just saying it's not fun that the party goes all this way finding the gold and then the campaign says, and they don't keep it for themselves. Like, the villains are trying to keep it for themselves, and you're telling the party you can't do that same thing? If you're leading into the dungeon of the Mad Mage, have them waste that gold. Get all of these valuable items that might be able to save them before dungeon of the Mad Mage, because they're gonna need them. Or just let them have gold, put it into the tavern, put it into this, put it into that, buy more property on Waterdeep, have one of them become a lord themselves. There's so many more interesting things they can do if they have access to all the gold. Otherwise, it's just kind of lame. I'd say, and the third and final tip I have for customizing the module itself, put an end game monster in the vault. Because the game ends when they find the vault. 
and somehow the parties all stop them. Sure, you could have the villains come and fight them, but that's not as interesting. What if instead they either find out or know there's a monster that guards the vault? You can have it be high level monsters such as a Garistro. You can have it be something like a Hydra. You can have it be a custom monster you come up with, but to end the game with just finding the treasure when D&D is about combat is a little lackluster. Also, if the party knows about the monster in advance, maybe they start to make deals with some of the other factions. They say to Relaxel, we'll give you some of the money because you're trying to become a lord. So you, you get a portion, you help us fight the, dra the dragon that's guarding the horde. Maybe the party tries to trick them and gives them the information, following them there, having the uh, villains fight this monster and then attacking them when they're weak. By having a monster that the party could know about, keyword right there, it makes it to where it's a little bit more interesting and they can strategize a little bit more, especially if they're fighting with four other factions. Now, let's say you wanted to put Dragon Heist in your game. How can you do that? Well, you can simply just take Waterdeep and put it in your world. That's an easy way to do it. I mean, the book gives you instructions and maps and diagrams on what Waterdeep is. It's very simple. Conversely, you could also just rename everything. If they already gave you the work on how to make a city, just put over a new layer of paint and suddenly it's a brand new thing. Most of your players, unless they've read through the module, aren't going to recognize that it's the same thing, unless you actively say it's the same thing. And maybe that in and of itself leads to an adventure. They know that Waterdeep is located in Faerun in the Forgotten Realms. What is it doing in this plane? How that lead into something? Maybe that ties into Avernus because Avernus had Baldur's Gate literally sucked out of the material plane into the Nine Hells. The, s the second thing you can do is simply just borrowing the factions. Again, much like the city as its own, these factions are already fleshed out. Their ideas, their interactions with one each other are already fleshed out. Have the, Z uh, the Zentarum fighting the Xanthar's Guild with the Castellaners and Dralaxel all duking it out. Just take Dralaxel and put him in your campaign. The point of modules is that someone else did the work for you. And so if you can take the work that has been done and place it in your own homebrew campaign, people aren't going to be mad, especially if it's cool characters like the Xanathar and Jarlaxle and Manchun and the Castle Lanterns. And you can even reflavor them. Maybe Manchun is a clone of Morning Kanan. Maybe you replace Xanathar. Instead of him being a beholder, he's an Aboleth. If you're going to do this route in a campaign, I would recommend not starting the campaign at level one in Dragon Heist. Have there be rumors of these factions? Have you heard of a multi-eyed figure that's leading this small thieves guild? Have them interact with them before they become villains. Perhaps they find Jarlaxel and he's a nice caring guy who's selling things off of his ship. The party likes him and creates a rapport with him. All the more sinister for when he shows up and is trying to fight them. These, this leads into the third tip. Have the characters be not only established in your world, but also reoccurring. Have them start creating bonds with characters before they start going after the vault. It's gonna make it much more interesting where they already have these dynamics with each other. Perhaps Manchun trained the party's wizard and there's a connection there. So that he keeps contacting Manchun for more and more details and that's how the party finds out about the heist. Maybe the party's rogue was a part of the Xanthar's Guild. Have either them connected to players' backstories or have them already established in a world where the players have met them before you start the heist. This will make it much more interesting if they already have relationships. If they hate the Xanathar, that means they're gonna wanna make sure he doesn't get that gold even more. But if they like Jarlaxle, well crap, we want the gold, but Jarlaxle's our friend too. Honestly, I love the concept of this book. I think the execution is a little problematic. Uh, it seems too much on rails for me. Like the fact that they just walk through and a fireball explodes and then they have to collect clues, but then those clues don't really lead to anywhere. This is such a good concept, the idea of four factions going after a massive hoard of treasure. And if we just add these homebrew rules to it, we can make it a little bit more interesting. Anyway, thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, please watch some of the other videos. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, those are things I'm required to tell you. Uh, it's good to be making videos again. I'm hoping I have be more consistent back at it again. Um, yeah, honestly, the reason I started making this again is because one of my videos just started doing really well. So tell your friends, tell you, share the video, do other stuff. Until then, I'll see you next time. I think, nope, why am I doing that? <laughs>